Good morning, church. Isn't that awesome? The presence of God is awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that the Lord, you know, is really showing Himself true and real even in our midst. And I'm excited. Amen. Are you excited? Amen. You know, from time to time, you know, I was suffering with this cough, cough and cold. But I declare this morning that enemy you will not be able to stop me. <laughs> my God, my way maker, my miracle worker God is with me. <laughs> Amen. Do you believe that? And I encourage you, you know, to hold on to that same promise because that promise is for all of us. Amen. For all of us who loves the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Uh, see to the, uh, say to the person beside you, said, I'm glad that you're here this morning. <laughs> I'm glad that you are not in the hospital. <laughs> you are here serving the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So this morning, I will continue on that series, The Heart of an Overcomer, Preparing for New Victories. And mainly our text will be in Joshua chapter 4, verses 21 to 24. And there are also verses that we'll read from chapter 5. And so, I'm bringing you back to this study because I believe that God is taking us to a deeper and higher journey with Him. And as a congregation, we must understand that if we want to come along with a move of God in our lives and in this ministry, we need to live with a heart of an overcomer. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Because God is leading us to new season. God is leading us or preparing us for new territories to take hold. And what does it mean to take hold of new territories? We face them not with a timid attitude, but with His strength, with His courage, and with His presence along with us. Amen. So tell the person beside you, prepare. Come on, prepare. Prepare to be attentive to listen to the Word of God for 45 minutes, okay? <laughs> Amen. Well, I don't know, but maybe you have situation in your life or in your family that it seems a struggle to you to overcome it. But let me tell you this morning that God will help you and lead you to overcome them because His heart is for you. Amen. His heart is for you and He is walking along with you. So whether that need is personal, whether that need is within the family, whether that need is in your job or in your relationship, God wants you to face it with a heart of an overcomer. Facing them with confidence that God's help is yours. Amen. Giving you the victory. See, you see, God is greater than your situation. God is greater than your situation. Now, this gives us, uh, scriptures gives us this assurance. Uh, Romans 8.33. Can we all read this together? Despite all these things, come on, come on, read this together. Despite all these things, what are those things? What are these things? Your situation, your circumstances, your problems, everything that you have, know that comes to, into your mind that you, know, you, you, you are afraid of. And then he said upon his word, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. 
What did he promise? All of these things, what? Overwhelming victory is ours. Hallelujah. Another verse that I would share to you, 1 John 4.4. 4. You are from God. Who is he telling to, talking to? You and I. You are from God and have overcome them. Amen. You are from God and have overcome them. For he who is who in you is greater than. Ah, this remembers me. Greater than I. Greater than your circumstances. Greater than your problem. That's what he promised. He is greater, greater than he who is in the world. He's talking about the enemy of our soul. Because God is much greater than he who is our enemy of our soul. Another verse I would tell you. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. This is Paul. You know, if you think of a person in the scripture who have gone through difficulties in life, that is the, uh, that is the apostle Paul. He went through shipwrecks. He went through prison. What else? He went through what? In fact, he declared in his word that this thorn in my flesh, he is asking God to remove it. But what did God say to him? Amen. Everybody read it. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. So God is assuring you today that in your situation, He is going to walk with you through it. He will give you strength and courage. He will give you the grace. He will give you the victory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I am inspired. <laughs> I don't know about you. you know, but the word of God is powerful. You know, going back to the story on Joshua, when God said to him that I will give you your land, that was God speaking to him that allowed him to develop a heart of an overcomer. God said, you need to be strong, Joshua. <clears throat> to be strong in the Lord, you need to be courageous. You need to consecrate, which means setting yourself apart Saying to God, I am setting apart my life and desire for you alone because you alone is the first in my life. And today, we are going to talk about what God will do for us to prepare us for new victories. This is what I know. If you want victory in your situation, just like what the Israelites had experienced in the book of Joshua, there are things that God will do to prepare us for what he is going to do through us. These are things that God will speak to you to do before he could take you into your victory. These are important things to learn and remember because it will be his process in you that will lead you into your victory. He will say to you that before I will take you into your victory, there are some things that I wanted to show to you and will do to you to prepare your heart so you can take hold on your victory. And many times, we don't want to wait and go through that process, isn't it? We will be frustrated because we would think, God, is this really necessary? Why can't I just get hold on your promises? Do I need to toil again? But God, look at this. God is interested in you first. Before the victory. Remember that. God is interested in you before the victory. Now, sometimes, you know, he wants, he wants you to know that his heart is for you. He wants you to know that he is ready for you to take your new victories that he already ordained for you. Believe the church. Say, say to your neighbor again. God's eyes is on you. Do you believe that? 
God's eyes is in you because He is interested in you first. Amen? You know, sometimes the immediate outlook we have within our situation in life is focused on how we are locked up. It is like we are in prison cell and there is no easy way out and so we scream within. God, take me out. Take me out from this situation. Now, show me your deliverance. Give me the victory. Don't you know that that is God's purpose for you? Yes. God, in His grace, will rescue you, and it is His assurance to lift you up from your situation. But He is taking you through a process for that victory. Amen. There is a process, so you will see that it is He who works for your victory. It is not you. So you will believe Him and will give Him the glory. Hallelujah. So I am encouraging you to believe God in all what He is doing because He will indeed bring you to victory. Amen. Amen. So we're going to base our study this morning in chapter 4 and chapter 5 of Joshua. And these verses will give us insights on certain things or attitude that an overcoming ma- overcomer must be developed in his heart. <coughs> so I give you three attitudes to prepare us to move to more victories in the new season that he is leading us. First, new victory is motivated by remembering God's miracles done for you. Amen? How many of you receive the miracle of God? Woo! Ah! How about you? You the rest of the raise your hand. I know that God has made a miracle in your life. Come on. Who among you? Yes, because God is indeed true and faithful. Amen. But new victory is motivated by remembering God's miracles done in your life. Now look at this Joshua 4, 21. Okay, after this, the cross. Uh, after they crossed over you know, the Jordan River, Joshua was spoken to the people of Israel. And this is what he was talking to them. He said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do, what do these stones mean? So here, what happens is that after they crossed Jordan, God instructed Joshua, and instructed the people to get 12 stones and place them over the river bank as a memorial. Remember the word. Memorial for them and to the generations to come. Okay. God has done miracle for them at this particular place. And so he has parted that flooded river. They were walking in the river in a dry ground. So that's why God said, when your children ask their fathers in times of to come, what do these stones, stones mean? So these are memorable stones. Amen. And verse 22 again says, then. Okay. When God establishes a miracle in your life, when, God stop, when you establish a memorabilia of God's doing in your life, he said, then you shall, what? Are you going to keep it yourself? No. He said, let your children know. Let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on a dry ground so that, the reason, all the people of the earth may know. Wow. You know what? I'm standing here that the word of God should not be kept in us. There is what we call the transmission okay, of that living word to your children and then even to those around you. This is the way that God's message will not stop. That God's miracle is really true. How do you let it be known? Let it be known by your children. My question is, are you telling that to your children? Are you having a time with your children? God, no, no, my child, this is what the Lord has done on me. I remember there are some days in our situation, uh, in, our, in our family, you know, we, we talked about them. 
I especially talked about my father because my father was blind since he was one year old. And so I talk, I pass, I pass it on to my children. You know what? Even if your Lulu was blind one year in, in, since he was one year old, but he was an amazing man of God. This is what he do. You know, he was blind, but when he lay his hands on the sick, the sick recovers. Okay? When there's something, you know, in our family that, you know, he can't take it anymore, especially if the children are wayward. I, I'm not one of them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what he did was bend, bend his knees before the Lord. He prayed every day. He mentioned that name. God, chase the heart of the sick child of mine. And you know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm the youngest, so it's not me. <laughs> Change the heart, you know. And, and I keep on telling to my children, so, you know what? Even my, my, my dad was blind, but he has a powerful testimony in his life. He did not see physically, but he, see the, he, he saw the glory of God. <laughs> Manifested. Amen. So, so what is he telling us? You know, you shall let your children know. Israel passed over his journal of dry ground so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. So if you want God to take you into a new victory, you need to get, to get a motivation and a reminder of what God has done in your life. You knew and you know that God has walked you through to your miracle in the past and you will be motivated by believing God to do it again and again today and in the future. Hallelujah. I want you to think of a moment of how, be, how God builds this ministry right here where you are. From a humble beginning and up today. Seven years, 17 years ago, this is our 17th anniversary team. 17 years ago, it started with seven families in the house, Bible study group. The two Mambos are one of the pioneers, the Bagas, right? There were others, uh, Bong, Charisma. Okay, I think there are three left. The rest of them, no, they did not win, but they pursue. Okay, other ways that God wants them to be a worker in the field of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember, see, seven families started this ministry, had been in several places for its place of worship, but it did not remain just seven families. Look at you. <laughs> Look at those beside you. Look at those behind you. Look at those in front of you. God added more families. God has used people to work together in expanding the work. As the Apostle Paul said, some have planted the seeds by inviting others by teaching the word and some watered it, sacrificing personal time for visitations, calling to follow up people, encourage those who were discouraged, volunteered in the different church ministries. People experience and receive miracles in our midst as an answered prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Name it. God has built stones of memorabilia in this ministry. And don't forget the church for us to look back and attest that indeed when God said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It is true because God is true to his word. And this memorabilia gave us confidence that God will do the same things and even greater things as you testify his goodness in your life. And transmit them to your children, to your neighbors, to your job mates, to others in coming days. Amen. This ministry had challenges, great and small that it went through, but the church continued to move forward and grow. Why? Because God has built in us a heart of an, of an overcomer. 
And he wants to build that heart in you too. And we will overcome those challenges, not by our own doings or our own strength, but by his spirit. Amen. By his spirit, by his power, by his strength, by, his, by the blood of the lamb, and by the testimonies that God is real. And he lead real people to take hold of his promises and we gain the victory. God brought us up into a process that made us stronger in the midst of storm. He built the church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against his plan and purpose. Amen. Amen. Are you glad, church? You have your own memorabilia to tell. <coughs> Personally, or as a family, about the work God has done in your life that brought you into victory. Think of those times. Think of those moments and build yourself up to believe and get the confidence that He can do it again and again and again and again. Do not forget the goodness and the faithfulness of God in your life. Bring them back into your remembrance and it will inspire you on believing for more victories in the coming days. See? When you sought to remember those things, what are those things? The faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, the miracle that God has given you. When you sought to remember those things, it will build your faith. Amen. It will build your faith to believe on what He will do in the future. So if you're facing a situation right now and you need a victory over it, think about the Lord. Think about his goodness, amen. And you will see yourself lifting up your hands and praising him. You put upon you the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness and lift up your voices to God. Raise a hallelujah, hallelujah to him louder and louder in the middle of the storms and your focus will be changed. Your faith is built up. Hallelujah! And you will believe God to do the impossibility that He will lead you into your victory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at this verse again. Thank you. Oh my. I don't have water. I have Starbucks. Oh. Thank you, son. <laughs> Read one more time. When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then, then you shall let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. See, to remember what God has done in the past will not only motivate you and build you up to believe for the future, but it will also cause people to know God. How great God is, and He gets the glory. <laughs> in other words, you know, the work of God will become a byword. Amen? Have you already heard? Oh, this is holy ground. This is it's GFFA. I remember God, what God has done in this ministry. Maybe you see, oh, yeah, this is Sister Amy Defy. This is Brother Rick Defy. Until now, they are still alive and kicking because God made a miracle in their lives. You could, we could go on and on and on and build that memorabilia in our lives because God wants to use you, each one of us, to be an overcomer. And so God would lead us into streets, probably, and highways that we have that chance to overcome even the little things in life that obstructs us. God wants you to be an overcomer. See, it does not... Start big, it starts small. Day by day, as you go along, you know, and listen to the voice of God, God will give you the strength to overcome. And those are memorabilia so that you will believe that God is still working today. Amen. 
It will become a byword among his people, among our community. You will be God's voice, his ambassador, telling your friends, family, co-workers about what God has done. Isn't that amazing? If you were here last Friday night, I was amazed of what God has done to these people, those who graduated in vision school. Why? They did not only hear it from God, but they feel it in their heart. And now what they feel in their hearts, they want it to be applied into their personal lives. And one of these days in Fresno, Holy Ground is the biggest church that would send missionaries all over the world. It's not because of what the pastors has done, no. It's not because of what Marilo, you know, and Eric lead. No. It's because of the promise. Hallelujah. Of the promise that God will do it again and again and again and again. And I want you to just think about it. You know, of how God will expand, you know, his work here. Not because of one or two or three, but everybody cuts the vision that is coming from the Lord. Vision call must be, must be used by God. But God is going to reveal that personal vision in your life. And that will keep you moving because so the people of the earth may know, may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord, your God, forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that's good news. Memorabilia of the works of God that gives you hope to hold on will be experienced too by people who have no relationship with him. How? Through your testimony, through your voice as God's ambassador, they will find hope that God is real and they will recognize what God has done and they will rejoice with you and God gets all the glory. That's the kind of attitude we need to develop in our hearts that will prepare us to our victory. And that is a good attitude to have. Amen. Amen. Second one. New victory demands for some things to be cut off. Or to be cut away. Ah, it's not an easy road. There are some things. It demands for some things to be cut away. When God prepares us to victory, it demands most for, for some things to be cut away. God commanded the Israelites years before, prior to their crossing over the Jordan River for circumcision to be part of the covenant. Now, listen carefully. Okay? God made that covenant with them. This practice it is embedded in the covenant God established with the people of Israel. And they have to honor God through this covenant. But somehow, they have neglected that along the way as they travel through the wilderness. Now, God is bringing them to the promised land, and God reminded them about this covenant. In order for them to take hold of what God promised, they have to honor him with this covenant. So, when you read Joshua 5, this is what the word of God says. <coughs> At the time, the Lord said to Joshua, okay, make flint knives, and circumcise the sons of Israel a second time. It's not that, you know, it's, it's twice you will do it. No, that's not what it says there. But the promise, remember the promise? They forgot it for the second time. God reminded them, hey, honor me with this covenant. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the sons of Israel at Gibeah Haraloth. Now, I don't know if I'm, I'm right, but your, your minds are, are thinking wild, well, probably. See, to the Israelite, God is saying here that there are some things that I have spoken to you that need to be cut away first. Until then, you are going to have victory. We want to follow God's righteousness. Let it be 100%. Amen. 
We want growth in this church. Let it be 100%, not by our undoing, but it's because of the Spirit of God that is working in our midst. That's why I keep on reminding each one of us as I remind myself, build up and encourage yourself to be strong with your intimacy with the Lord. And we're giving, you know, opportunities for us to do that as a church, as a member, you know, of this particular ministry. Build it up. Come to Friday prayer meetings. I thank God for 10, 12 that responded. But how many of us here? What is that percentage? Too few. We have done what Saturday morning, first Saturday of the month, are for the women's ministry. A women's be encouraged. What I am doing this because this is very clear in my mind and in my heart as God gives it. If you want this ministry to move on, develop your intimacy with me. And I can't make any excuses because that's very clear. As a congregation, as a church, I know we're praying in our houses. We have devotional probably, but this is a different thing. God wants okay, to build in us as a group. We want God to be honored and be glorified. He will be the center of everything we do. How do we do that? How do we demonstrate that? By being in one accord as the people in, in, in Jerusalem were, were one accord you know, and waiting for the Spirit of God to come. You will see amazing things that God will do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, <clears throat> how are we to understand this truth or apply this truth in our times? In your situation where you are wanting victory, there may be things in your life that are hindering you from taking hold of that victory that God has for you. Maybe because you are just living on delayed obedience. God has been dealing with you regarding those things. But it's hard to let it go. God told you to do some things, but you were not obeying. You were living in a delayed obedience. See, the victory is before you to take hold. But God is asking you to cut away some things in your life that hinder his victory to be unfolded before you. Sometimes there are attitudes in our hearts that can keep us from having the victory. And those things need to be cut away. It can be a bitter spirit towards somebody. It can be an anger that you allow to foster in your hearts and you are just hanging onto it. It could be any attitude about the things of God that hinders you to grow in Him. You need to cut that away. It could be weakness, the way you speak to others or the way you process with what you hear. And the reactions and responses demonstrates discourse of negativism. You need to cut away those attitudes that hinders your victory. Some are immersed to internet games that shorten your time for your personal devotion. Some of us have diversion attitude. I call it diversion attitude. The moment God reminds you to have your devotional or to read the word of God or have your personal devotion or listen attentively to the sermon or in a life group Bible study, suddenly the, the diversion attitude kicks in. You hold your phones and find yourselves in Facebook or in Twitter, or Instagram for a long time, forgetting, neglecting your time with God. I would admit to you that there are some times that I have to rebuke myself. Because I too, is a victim of that. And don't tell me, no pastor, I'm not, because I'm righteous before the Lord. And God has been convicting you in this aspect. But there is that delayed obedience. There is that delayed obedience. 
You know? And many, may, may, maybe some of you are secretly hooked on pornography. Or some are blinded by the shadow of what we call white lies. Not being truthful or honest to yourself and to others through your words and actions. Some of you have this attitude of criticism and skepticism. It becomes instinct in you whenever you hear things that it does not click in you. And God has been dealing you from these weaknesses. But you have delayed obedience to God's conviction in your life. And this hinders you from receiving your victory. And I can tell you this. When bad attitude lives, you cannot walk in victory. Can we all read this together? Go. When bad attitude lives, you cannot walk in victory. So what do you do? Let go. Cut away. Let go. So say that to your neighbors. Let go. Let go of those habits. Amen. And many people also are too comfortable of being comfortable. Oh, I, I don't need to be more pastor. I will just stay here. Don't, don't, don't assign me to another ministry. I have fun here. I want here. I have fun. Too comfortable <laughs> of being comfortable. That is the one hindering you from obeying God's command. God is reminding you this morning that there are things you need to cut away. So that you can see Him doing greater things in your life. God is preparing you for your victory. And you need to listen to His voice and obey Him. God has greater things in store for you. But until you learn to let go of those things, cut them away, He can work His victory in your behalf. Last thing. I still have 15 minutes or 10 minutes. <coughs> Are you ready to quit? It's not 45 minutes yet. <coughs> New victory commands more commitment to the future than to your past. How many of you think, sometimes think that way? Noong araw, mabuti pa kami noon. Ngayon, hindi ko na makikita yan. What I'm saying is, before, no, I experienced those happy days, but now I cannot see it anymore. See, look at this. Look at the verse. Joshua 5.10. While well, the people of Israel were encamped at Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month in the evening of the plains of Jericho. And the day after the Passover on that very day, the eighth of the produce of the land and leaving cakes and parts again. And the manna ceased the day after the Ate of the produce of the land. And there was no longer manna for the people of Israel, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. So there was a daily provision for God's people. The supply of manna for six days in a week. Remember that? Six days in a week. Bread from heaven were fallen to feed the hungry. You don't need to go to St. Mark and buy something. Talked about provision of God. That weekly provision supply was great. Aren't you happy if God will do that to you? You will be. But God was about to bring them into a new season of blessing. And God suddenly does things differently. The manna way of provision has to stop. Now they have to eat out of the produce of the land. There comes the decision point. When God works one way, and then suddenly He comes and does it differently. You see, no more manna. Now I have to toil the land. 
You know, when you are used to the pattern of God's blessing in one way, especially when you don't need to labor for it or work for it, it feels great. Right? But now God is going to move in a different way. He directs them differently. No more manna coming from heaven. They are now going to eat the produce of the land. They are now going to be fighting battles and is going to do powerful things. But here they are who are used by the manna blessing that feels great. They're being used to the manna blessings hinders them to move along with the better things that are ahead of them. As an example, Let's say that we're entering the new season and you saved 10 years ago. You were saved 10 years ago. During that time, you felt the first love of God or for God. No, you were on fire for Him. You remember singing that song, You're all I want. You're all I ever needed. And every time you sing that song, you can't help but cry. It touches your heart, your soul, and every word of that song was jumping out on you. You were taking notes on every sermon. And in the life group Bible study you attended, you listen carefully. Amen. You feel God is there. And suddenly, you are in a new season. And you think to look, tend to look back and you will say, oh, my there was no comparison of that feeling I experienced before. There is no comparison of the time of that season where you felt the first love for God and you say, that's where God is. He is in that season of my life. And sometimes we are like that. We are stuck in our old mentality to our, emo- our old emotions, to the familiar, that we are not willing to move forward to the new things, new season of blessing that God has prepared for us. I believe God is leading us to a new season. He has prepared new things, new blessings for this ministry and for you personally and for your family. God is still here. God is still in this season, but he is doing things differently. So you may ask this way, am I going to start anew? Will I start building again, going through hard toward process? Will I be placed in a familiar territory, another type of ministry, different areas of responsibility? What is this? It's not the same before. The songs are different. No more hymns. No longer hill song music. It's all elevation. And I don't feel emotional driven. I don't feel emotionally driven. It's like 10 years. It's not like 10 years ago. Come on. In other words, it's a new season. <laughs> it's new challenges. It's new responsibility. And God is still here this new season as he was there before. <laughs> Amen. God has more for this ministry. He is leading us to new season and he is showing us new things. He has new opportunities, new blessings that he has prepared for us, for you and your family. You could observe church if you come here every week, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. God has multiplied his blessing to us so that we will be a blessing to others. We have food, food, food distribution every week. If you're not here, you better come. <coughs> so you will see. I want you to know, people that are attending life group ministries, I want you to observe the move of God, even in life group. The burdens in their hearts to know more of Him. The desire to know the Word of God. You know, I'm sorry, church, but we, we, we have to gang up, you know, uh, Rowena for her testimony. My, I said, Lord, if we only have 50 people like her. Who has that hunger? One of these days you will hear his testimony because I requested her to record that. And Fred, please. Where's Fred. Let's videotape, okay? Yeah. Oh, here's a friend, okay? Let's videotape. Yes. So everybody will hear the goodness 
and the faithfulness of God. <coughs> Hallelujah. See, this is what I learned. I'm lost, okay. Anyway, oh, there we go. Okay, anyway, this is what I learned. In order for us to see him moving in this new season, he gave to us a challenge. And that challenge is to be motivated by what he has done through the years. He has brought us through those challenges, and each challenge he leads us to victory. That is a testament of his abiding presence and help us and will motivate us to move forward to this new season, new season with this direction. But he is reminding us also that there are things that we need to cut away. Things that we know that will hamper his work. And he is looking into our hearts that is willing and open to his prompting. A heart that will say, God, take me higher. I am willing to leave behind my old familiar mentality, my comfort zone, what I am used to see and holding on to it. I am willing to reach out to your new things, better things for life, my family and my ministry. Help me to trust you and in what you will do for me. Your leadership is what I desire and I will do. Give me the strength and the courage to follow your will. So when God brings us to the new seasons of blessing, He is with us. His presence will go before us. He wants us to be prepared so He will build us a heart of an overcomer. He shows to us that new victories are before us. We need to believe that he can do it again and again by remembering and be motivated by what he has already done in the past. His goodness, his faithfulness he has done. We need to trust him and obey him when he prompts us to cut away things that hinders us to receive his better blessings in store for us. And this is how I would end it. Because better things <coughs> are much better. <coughs> right? Better things are much better than the good things we have tasted in the past. <coughs> <coughs> For the last time, I want you to say to your neighbors, better things. Come on. Come on. See it that you are convinced. Better things. Amen. Better things are much better. Hallelujah. <laughs> My challenge, as I will call the worship team to please prepare themselves. Because I want us to respond to the message of the Lord. Allow Him to shape us. And be committed to him and to do his work. Today and in the coming days. He promised to us better things to be unfold. New victories to take, greater heights to reach. But the question is, are we willing to journey with him in this new season? Jesus is pleased in your commitment to him. He hears you and he will lead you through. If you feel you need his strength today, I want us to bow down our heads and say, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing before you. I know that God is talking to you. The Spirit of God is moving in your hearts. And it is for probably urging you now what to be cut away. But see, it is our decision if we wanted to move along. It takes our surrender to Him. 
Amen. So if you see that in your heart and you feel that God is urging you, the Spirit of God is prompting you in your hearts, uh, you need to surrender your things in your life that needs to be surrendered before God. I challenge you this morning to stand up where you are seated as we sing this song. As we sing this song. Stand up to your feet. Come to the altar if you need prayer this morning. Oh, to Jesus. Hallelujah. All to Jesus I surrender All to Him I freely give And I Respond to the voice of the Spirit in your heart this morning love and I challenge you to just him rise up from where you are His presence Come to the altar we will be praying for you. God and is I here. I surrender all. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I, I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. One more time, if you need a touch of God this morning, why didn't you come to the altar and dedicate yourself to God? Jesus? There is only one inside my life. Really. All to Him, my Jesus. Oh, I surrender. Thank you, Jesus.
to Jesus, come on. Head on to Jesus, I surrender all. speed I have, pleasures all, for Jesus, Sing, I surrender. Come on. Oh, I, I surrender. Oh, I surrender. Oh, I surrender. Oh, I surrender. Oh, I surrender. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. And all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. spirit of God and I want you to just continue on continue on listening to his voice he promises your victory your personal victory in your life he promised that and I want you to take hold of that remember you are serving a God who is faithful Thank you, Jesus. One more time as we sing the song. Why don't we all rise up this morning and just sing it from the depths of our hearts. God, this is what I desire in my life. I surrender everything, oh Lord, God, to you. Oh, and I surrender. Oh, I surrender. Oh, to be my blessed Savior, sing I surrender all. One more time, I surrender all. Oh, and I, I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. Oh, to be Blessed Savior, I surrender. We'll sing one more time this song. And as we sing this, I want you to go back to your seats where you are and just continue worshiping and praising the Lord. And I, I surrender. Yes, Jesus. I surrender. And all. To Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your wonderful thoughts, Heavenly Father. We exalt your name, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God, for prompting our hearts. You see, you see us, O oh God, responding to you. Guard us, O oh Lord, from the works of the enemy that will try, O oh Lord God, even to hinder us in moving forward and obeying your voice. Because we are standing in a solid ground. And we thank you for the victory that you have given to each one of us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody seated. Be seated, please. We would like to honor, this is Tomorrow is Veterans Day. <clears throat> we have, would like to honor those who were serving in the military and also with their families. So if you have served 
in whatever department or division of our military in the United States, I would like you to stand up. Come on. Yes, thank you for serving. We would like to pray for you, and I want you to come to the front. <coughs> if you could please, just come to the front. And I want the families to support them. Amen? Families, if you are a member of the family of these veterans, I want you to come. <coughs> Whether you are serving, you know, uh, at present, please do come. Uh, the families, please come. Family. Amen. We'll surround them. Yes, I know that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I was just looking at Brian. Why don't you stay behind Brian? He is your family. Come on. <laughs> As Jairo leads, you know, the worship team. So I want him to stand as the father of those who are serving in the worship team. Yes, Manong Jo. Hallelujah. Can we give them an applause, you know, praise one more time. Thank you. Thank you for serving the country. Thank you, Jesus. You are good. You are great. I'm happy to see Marvin. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we stretch forth our hands towards them? And I'm going to pray this morning. Father, thank you for the lives of your people. Thank you for their dedication. Thank you for their service. You know their hearts. Even you have seen the dangers. But God, you have blessed them and you have protected them. And here they are as a testimony of your faithfulness, your goodness, your, faithful, your, your protection. Indeed, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. <clears throat> and today, Father, I pray for your special blessing upon their lives, O God, as we honor them, their dedication to this country, and even to this country, Lord God, who called them for their service. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you are going to continually bless their lives. Oh, God, especially, oh, Lord, I pray for their spiritual life, that they will grow in you. God, even your protection will be upon them. God, you see also God, even their needs, O oh Lord. Some of them have physical needs. And I pray today in the name of Jesus, as we sing that song, you are our way maker. You are our work of God of miracle. You, you are going to do that, O oh Lord God, in their needs right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be, your, be their strength. Thank you, Father. Those who are faithfully honoring you, as they humble themselves, you will honor them. So I pray, O oh God, even those who have needs, O oh Lord God, not only physically, but probably provision in their lives. But thank you, because you are our provider. Your resources will never run dry. Yes. And so I pray, God, that you'll bless them abundantly. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will go before them and let them see the glory that is before them, O God. When they serve you, O God, you will not only bless them, O Lord God, physically, you would bless them materially, you would bless them spiritually, because you are our God of abundance. I pray for their families also, God, that they will reap the blessings that you have for them. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Continue to protect them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we give them? Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord.